good morning, evening, or afternoon, whichever one is going on for you at this current point in time. Today, since we're already here, we're going to be changing out the TPR valve. And this is connected to your water heater. In case you don't know what it is, let me show you what it does. Now on the side of your water heater, mine just happens to be behind a wall, you're going to see a small little knob that's going to be hanging off the side of your water heater. And that's, that's what the TPR valve is. So this threads directly in and it does three things. Let me tell you what they are. Now this is the original and of course this is the replacement. I decided to go with one that's roughly two inches longer because it's just better as far as it being able to drip into a bucket versus it almost dripping down the side of the water heater itself. That's unacceptable. Also, this white shaft here, which it should be white like this when it's brand new. And again, the shaft is in here. It's all one temperature probe. When this probe senses that it's heating up, it will cause this coil in here to open up. And that is what will release your water in there. As you open, see how it moves? This will sit up, let the water out, and then close itself when it's done. Now this thing has done its job. You can see the shaft itself right in the center there is taking an almost bluish color. This thing has gone through it. It's about 10 years old, roughly. So this thing is in need of changing. But let's say for whatever reason, your temperature of your water is fine. However, it's still dripping. Well, TPR is temperature pressure release. So if it's not reaching a certain temperature, in which case the most common, and they will always have the information up here, it's usually 210 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 PSI. So if it reaches that temperature or that pressure, it will start to drip. It may be that both things are happening at the same time, but typically it's one or the other. Now, the third reason that this could potentially leak is that when these things do leak, whatever sediment or buildup that is in your water or in your tank, they start to slowly creep in and get into that little collar. So where the seal is supposed to sit, sediment will take its place and then it will either stick open or it'll just kind of corrode shut. In which case, some people say open this all the way and then slam it down a couple times to loosen that sediment. I say, no, don't do that. Even with these, even brand new ones, you shouldn't be fiddling with this. Just let it go. If you have your water heater, drain it, you know, flush out all the sediment at the bottom. Don't flush it through here. I only do that because there's no other point in my water heater, but you most likely have a full size one that will work. Now, right before we get this done, two things that you will need or are recommended are PTFE tape. Again, Blue Monster is just what I use, but you have PTFE tape and that's just gonna give that better seal around the threads and also keep them from sticking and that pipe thread sealant. So it will help with sealing as well as keeping those threads lubricated so there's no damage of metal to metal later. Those two things are highly recommended and we can get this in. Let's go. First thing we're gonna do is get that PTFE wrapped around those threads clockwise or whichever way your threads go. I don't imagine anything would be counterclockwise, but you know, Whichever way your threads are going, that's the way your PTFE tape should be wrapped. So, and also never let it wrap where it's in front of the threads. No, you want to back it out and only have it in the threads. So once it's threaded in, we're going to give it a little bit of pipe dope. I love that they come with a little brush in the cap. Something about the way this smells just reminds me of like old school glue from school. Next, we're gonna give a little bit of that pipe sealant or that thread sealant just around and use the brush, scrape it off and just take away any of the excess and you can put that back in the can. Again, it's not crazy expensive, but there's no need to waste. So now that there's PTFE and thread sealant. Some people might even be like, oh my God, that's actually way too much. Just showing you that it should be around the threads. All right, clean it up and it goes back in your tank. 
Try your best not to touch anything else and you're going to push it in by hand. Thread it in until it's straight. Now once it's hand tight, you're gonna give it one more turn, maybe a turn and a half of the pliers. I don't care if you use a pipe wrench, if you use channel locks, if you use whatever you got, make sure this is snug and not leaking, but also you do not want to gorilla strength this. Just enough. And that is right on the money. Now, with the bucket being here, in case for whatever reason there's a drip here and there from fluctuations in pressure, again, uh, your pressures in your area might fluctuate if there happen to be people doing any kind of construction using the water in the area. So those things, that's why people put expansion tanks and things for fluctuations of pressure. But with the longer shaft, it should drip much more directly into the bucket as opposed to wetting the side like it was before. Nice and tight and sealed. All that's left is to carefully release the pressure from hot, which is not really gonna do anything because it's not full yet, but from cold. Again, do not open the cold all the way or the hot. You wanna gradually release the pressure that's been building up from before as it slowly gets into your tank. And try to have one of your fixtures open so if there's any air in the system, the air will gradually go to your faucet rather than being shoved into that tank, creating more pressure. And last thing before my battery dies, once the pressures are completely open, you're gonna just go over to your closest fixture and your furthest fixtures and make sure that there's no air in the system. So when you open it, you should see some coughs of air or not. And again, it is better for the purges of air to come out through your faucet than for them to just bring all that force to your tank. It's safer here. So this is good. Now just go to your shower, your toilet, your tank, make sure everything else has received pressure as well because there will be still residual air in your plumbing. Make sure that there's no damage anywhere else and if everything's looking good, you're on your way. Congratulations, you just replaced your TPR valve. Oh, but here's the shower. Open it up. No air bubbles, everything nice and calm. Okay, the hot water in the sink, in the bathroom, the shower are okay. This is the kitchen sink. Just keep the hot all the way open. Again, this is completely cold water, but this is just to make sure that on the hot and on the cold, that there are no air bubbles in the line. And we are all set. Last thing is just to go flush that toilet. Now the refill is completely open and you can hear the tank is filling. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching. If you need a plumber, let it be because there's an actual flood or something you genuinely don't know how to build or replace. Otherwise, small things like this really do add up with the two, three, $400 call charges because these plumbers will come out usually the same day unless you want to pay that emergency fee which could be in, a, in another hundred two hundred dollars that they'll add on top don't do it to yourself fix it yourself instead and until next time work smart the last thing i wanted to say was if you happen to be doing any kind of maintenance with your water heater it goes without saying, please don't forget to turn it back on. Save you the trip of going up the stairs from the basement or the first floor or wherever you have it or going up to the attic. Don't do it to yourself. If you happen to be doing this for somebody else, please sweep, 
clean, dry, so that you leave a good impression. I'm out of here.